Hello and welcome to another episode of Pakistanomy. My name is Uzair Yunus and before we start this week's discussion, I just want to plug in a new Tabadla podcast called Dragon Road, which is going to be hosted by Arif Rafiq. If you've been enjoying Pakistanomy, I'm pretty sure you will also enjoy season one of Dra- Dragon Road, which basically focuses on China's rising influence in the region and around the world. And Arif has had some fantastic conversations over the course of the first season. So do check it out. Um, and do subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Today, we're going to be talking with Vajad Khan, who is Nikki Asia's digital editor in New York City. He's reporting on the Indo-Pacific and Afghanistan and Pakistan security. He's soon going to be hosting his own podcast for Nikki called Made in Asia. And he also is the author of the Indo-Pacific Diaries, which is a weekly newsletter covering everything security related from New York City to Delhi. So, Vajad, thank you so much for taking out the time today and welcome to Pakistanomy. Thanks, uh, Zair. Great, uh, great to be a big fan of the show. Big fan. Thank you. And big fan of you and your work as well. So, I'm excited about this conversation because typically on Pakistanomy, we talk about structural issues of the economy and structural issues in terms of the political economy in Pakistan. And if you're talking about that, you cannot ignore the structures and the influences within and outside the media particularly in the last few days, everything's been front and center in the headlines again with Hamid Mir and Asatur and everything that's happened in Islamabad. And so I figured we'd have you on the show and talk to you about how you as a journalist who's worked in Pakistan internationally have experienced the Pakistani media landscape, how you view its structural issues. Um, And so let's just start with that for the audience or the listener who doesn't fully understand how Pakistan's media operates. Give us a one-on-one. Give us an understanding of this state-controlled or business elite-controlled media and how it functions. All right. Well, firstly, I'm going to give you a shout-out and do something which I haven't done, which I've been pining to do for a while, which is Pakistan ke khilaf bohat sare mahaz khole, kuch humne khud khole aur kaafi sare humare khilaf khole gaye. Aaj ka mahaz Pakistanomi ke naam aur media ke naam. Um, I wanted to say that because I've missed Pakistani media. Um, I missed it because uh, it's where I made my bones. I joined it um, uh, to answer your question. I joined it right when it was uh, on the verge of takeoff. I was on the launch team of Geo News. Um, I was uh, uh, chiseling out strategy for Hamid Mir before he was Hamid Mir. I mean, he was always Hamid Mir, but before he was really, you know, uh, going uh, going big time on it. And I was, you know, fixing coffee for the bosses and him. But uh, I've been in it right from its inception. And I've had the privilege and the pleasure to uh, enjoy it. Um, I must say, though, that uh, when uh, I, I, I mean it more than ironically, that Pakistan ke khilaf bahut sare mahaz khule, of course, is from my show. But the, the critical line is, kuch humne khud khole aur bahut sare humare khilaf khole gaye. Um, I'm going to take that uh, from my show from Dunya News, which ran between, we ran over 200 episodes, was a weekly show critically acclaimed, ran between 2015 and uh, 2019, uh, ran four years, did well. Um, we even have a Twitter, verified Twitter page, by the way. It's called Mahaz Reports, in case anybody's interested. We don't tweet much, but we're there, we're around, we're there to stay. Um, but, uh, Uzair, to tell you the truth, it's a, I'm not here as an apologist um, for any organization, institution, or person, but... Um, a lot of it, a lot of what's happened to Pakistani media of late is the fault of the powers that be. But uh, some of it also has to do with the innate and inherent structural flaws which uh, the Pakistani media abides by. Now, we've all talked about the forge, uh, which we're going to get to in greater detail, I hope, uh, later in the show. But to answer your question about structures, so there's two or three types of Pakistani media. And for someone who's done multimedia, so I've made a print ke liye kaam ki hai. Meri pehli nokri jo thi, uh, print mein, wo ki internship thi, mid nineties mein, uh, for uh, the news. Then I went and completed college. At college, I was the editor of the Michigan Daily, which is uh, one of the largest college run, uh, in the independent uh, college student run newspapers in the, in the country. I covered 9-11 or the events of 9-11 and then the war in Afghanistan, the invasion of Afghanistan, which is now coming full circle for my college paper. I returned to Pakistan to ride the big media wave, uh, which we are still sort of enjoying in a way. Ironically, it had to take a dictator 
Uh, we can talk more about Musharraf's reasons for um, uh, what happened uh, and why he launched a deregulated Pakistani media. But um, I, I had the pleasure, like I said, the pleasure and privilege to be in Pakistani media right from the beginning. Magar, the big thing is that the inherent structural flaws, the inability that over almost two decades, was there, uh, this media has not really evolved from the sage run uh, uh, conglomerate to something larger. When I say sage run conglomerate, uh, I qualify that because today, for example, the Segals of Dawn are married into the Lakhanis uh, of Express. That for me uh, is not just a happy marriage between uh, the Segals and the Lakhanis, it's also a conglomerate. There is an understanding. So, there's been no doubt that there's at least three groups, at least three groups. Um, and these are the old school groups and more power to them because they have a tendency uh, uh, to, well, off late, they've had a tendency, the junk group, the dawn group, and uh, the business recorder group. They've had a tendency was there, to, to flex more muscle because that's, it's their job. That's been the USP. That's all they've done. Unka khandani peshai has been um, uh, journalism. This is other kuch hone aata nahi hai. Magar, even though the cycles have other industrial interests as well. However, fair to say, that's all they've been doing for a while. However, um, beyond that, the other states have even less um, uh, of uh, expertise in journalism, if you want to call it that. But they're all still states. Whether you're a double roti state or a akhbar printing state, you're still a state. And the fact that they haven't been able to evolve into the next level, which would be going public, which would be a more corporatized structure, uh, a larger structure uh, with more investments going in, um, into the, the, the systems, the, the, the organization itself, the training, the content, uh, the, the look and feel, how, how, how this news actually like, like reads and smells like and looks like, um, none of that's happened. Um, I remember one of my first jobs as the product, I was product development manager, by the way, very proudly for Geo News uh, in my, right after college, I got recruited by uh, Mir Ibrahim Rahman, who is, who was and is still currently the uh, CEO of uh, uh, the Geo television network, which remains by and large, the most influential as well as the largest revenue earning network in the country. Now, uh, he was just out of college. I was just out of college. We are from the same generation. He hired me because he knew where I was coming from. I had ideas. I still do. Not that nobody, anybody gives them attention. But uh, um, Ibrahim hired me and gave me a full lease on. He said, listen, let's just, just structure the way news is done. And we went around researching. We had focus groups. Pakistan mein lunch kab hota hai. Pakistan mein dinner kab hota hai. Pakistan mein marton ko kwaan si tie ka rang pasand hai. Orton ko kwaan si tie ka rang pasand hai. Marton ko dbatte wali khatun pasand hai. Orton ko dbatte. We did all sorts of... So, so um, this wasn't just like Jolly Roger. It was pretty professional stuff. Right, right. For that level, I mean, you got a, you got a poli sci history major running a team of six people from product development, doing what we could do, focus groups, the works, hired a research organization, hired a consultancy, hired some Goras to come and train our, us and our, and our journals. So there was some sort of, I guess you can say institutional focus. This wasn't just random. This wasn't just me, Shakilo Rahman, me, Ibrahim Rahman, get up one day and have a dream and start Geo. This wasn't random, right? There was a there was a process to it. And especially Geo, which I'm, well, it might be controversial for a lot of people, like it or not, they put their money where their mouth is in terms of research. Geo still, till today, takes its, its market research very seriously. There's a reason it's a market leader. Despite being unliked by a lot of people, Geo takes that uh, that pushback from the market and that feedback from the market very seriously. However, even though we were professional, I know deep inside that we can be more, you know, like I, we can be much more. Uh, unfortunately, because of the limitations of the leadership, as well as the worldview of um, our business teams, our marketing teams, um, 
less so our editorial teams, which I'm sure are very brave still till today. Um, we didn't really expand beyond that. It sort of remained a, a mom and pop kind of op. It ended up becoming what every Satran op becomes. But that's not the story. We all know that story. That's not what I'm here to tell you. I'm going to answer your question about what happened with the, the, um, the powers that be. Um, well, there's been two Pakistani uh, medium, uh, so to say, uh, uh, Uzair. There was a, between its deregulation in uh, 02 or 03 by General Musharraf, right till 07, 08, uh, there was, that was the golden age of Pakistani media. In 07, 08, three things happened. Three things happened, and they happened in quick succession. One was the assassination of Benazir Bhutto. Two was the deposition of Musharraf himself. And three were the Mumbai attacks. And these three incidents, um, some people say that the same people were behind them. Some people disagree. Uh, the jury's still out uh, as far as the reporting on it is concerned. But bottom line is that Vodena or Achkadena, Tika, the golden age of Pakistani media, because the media which existed right from its inception, TV media, deregulated media, ki baat ho so print ki baat ho print ki ek aur episode kare, wo bhi thodi baat, in reference beat mein, beach mein. but bottom line is that 2 or 3 mein media launch hota hai. ARY, uh, GEO, new channels launch hota hai. Aaj Express follow soon after, ye do chaar, isli, aur ye isli bhi abhi bhi bade hai, kyunke inka paas first mover advantage tha, ye pehle aay thai. Uh, seven, eight tak, people within the media, and even some of these states, they started playing ball with the powers that be. Or uh say ye where ke jo independence and media ki wo compromise over. Up Usme Pir Khame Bange, pro army, anti army, pro Nawaz, anti Nawaz, pro Nawaz, apna pro Zardari, anti Zardari, pro Imra. It, 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 it became a so from, a, from your perspective, really quickly, was the idea that this side is pro-army, anti-army, pro-Nawaz, Zardari, was a conscious choice? Thi? Kya thi force hue? Kisi corners ke andar? Was it a bit of everything? Like, the golden age end hui or the camps banne lage, what was the driving force behind it? Good question. Good question. So, the jo, dekho, pehle to we have to go to inception. So, this is a good time to talk about Musharraf. Now, he said this to me in his show, which I've interviewed him about this very question you asked me. He's also said this, this in his own biography. General Musharraf, in 1999, when he was general, but not president general, right? He was still just the military chief of this country, this great country, by the way, I miss Pakistan. General Musharraf saw while he was fighting Kargil and leading um, combat operations as the commander in chief of Pakistan's military at that time, um, General Musharraf saw something strange happen in 19, in the summer of 99. He saw that Indian media, private Indian media, deregulated Indian media, was really getting that country together, galvanizing the narrative of Indian society by bringing positive the, fifth generation hardware, uh, fifth generation warfare. I don't, I don't buy that. Uh, because a lot of good reporters have come out of that. Uh, Barkha Dath has come out of that. Rajdeep Sardesai have come out of that. It would be a travesty to call some of my colleagues fifth generation warriors. Um, so that may be your opinion, but not mine. No, I, I meant it tongue is cheek as a sarcastic I, I, take I, I, on what, I, I, what is like, the mainstream. If it's tongue in cheek, if it's tongue in cheek, then, uh, then I'm doing, and then I'm with you. But, but um, short of that, he saw how deregulated, independent, quasi-independent, private, whatever you want to call it, Indian media galvanized India during Kargil. While PTV was showing that the dhage mein se udar, uh, Indian jets are coming, the girls are being killed, and the girls are being killed, and the girls are being killed, and the Typical. Completely oblivious of the reality of planet Earth. Right? Udar, Nawaz Sharif was running the White House on the 4th of July uh, to Bill Clinton, and uh, 
इधर आपको वो चीचा पत्नी का जो की जो बाघ है उनका उनका टूर दिखाया जा रहा था राइट सो मशरफ वॉज जेन्यूनली डिसअपॉइंटेड बिकॉज देर वॉज एन इंफॉर्मेशन वॉरियर इन हिम अलॉन्ग विद यू नो दल मार्शल वॉरियर and one of the things when he did take over which he did discuss with uh, advisors like tariq aziz and others um was ke yaar uh, we really have to get the country behind us every dictator needs the country to be behind him as well otherwise uske paas reh kya gaya magar jo aur unhone khud bola hai ki i wanted the country behind me i wanted the country behind the cause and i wanted the media the parks the deregulated pakistani media to replicate to replicate what the indians did magar musharraf sahab ek cheez bhool gaye wo ek cheez bhool gaye wo ye bhool gaye ki jo pakistani sahafi hai uska jo experience raha hai 50 60 70 saalon mein apni state ke sath apni fauj ke sath aur apne idaron ke sath wo bahut bitter raha hai jo hindustani sahafi hai uska wo experience nahi raha i'm sure ki har आज मैं न्यूयॉर्क में बैठा हुआ मुझे पता है कि हर इकोनॉमी में हर पॉलिटिकल इकोनॉमी में जो डेमोक्रेसी हो या ऑटोक्रेसी हो मीडिया पे प्रेशर आता है कभी एड से आता है कभी बॉस से आता है कभी बॉस के बॉस से आता है कभी सदर साहब से डायरेक्टली आता है मगर मीडिया पे प्रेशर कभी सोशल मीडिया से आता है लोगों से आता है व्यूअरशिप से आता है रेटिंग से आता है हर मीडिया के ऊपर प्रेशर आता है उसे मगर मुशरफ साहब भूल गए कि पाकिस्तानी मीडिया हिंदुस्तानी मीडिया नहीं है क्योंकि पाकिस्तानी सहाफी हिंदुस्तानी सहाफी नहीं है बारिंग बारिंग इंदिरा गांधी इमरजेंसी मतलब ओवर बिफोर द मोदी रजीम केम इन देव हैड अ प्रेडी डिसेंट रन एट इट राइट यार एंड इवन एडवर्सरियल रिलेशनशिप नहीं रहा उस तरह का नहीं बट बट उजैर इवन ड्यूरिंग द इमरजेंसी कितने इंसिडेंट्स देखो सप्रेशन ड्यूरिंग द इंसर्जेंसी इज वन इमरजेंसी इज वन थिंग ना इमरजेंसी लगी हुई है ठीक है ना वोट कर सकते हो ना आप फिर सकते हो ना आप टूट सकते हो ना आप लिख सकते हो emergency indira gandhi will go down in inf- in history and in infamy as the woman and a woman declared it but the question is ke pakistani sahafiyon ke sath violence has been ongoing for decades ye asatur is not the first he is hopefully the last but he won't be you know and i know this but he is not the first aur ye by the way uh, 2000s mein nahi shuru hua ye hota raha hai kode ja saab aur ja saab se pehle ke zamane ke lagte rahe hain aur उन दिनों में भी एक प्रो फौज खिता था विच प्लेड बॉल विद द पावर्स दैट बी ठीक है जैसे द द निजामी फैमिली इज इज फेमस फॉर इट्स टाइज विद जिया रिजीम ठीक है एंड अयूब साहब का के जो बायोग्राफर हैं वो उनकी जो आ रही है अभी तक उनकी बच्चियां चलाती हैं नॉट टू नेम दैम बट वी ऑल नो हु दैट फैमिली इज दे इज अ होल line this whole lineage of reporters who have played ball and who have not played ball and that's because they've been given a choice right but the main thing is that violence i'm here to talk about violence today the indian state exists the indian state state i'm sure has pressurized the indian media through hook by crook uh, over the years i'm not saying that indian media i'm going to talk at length about indian media as well in the show of yours i hope because i've worked in india um i've been I worked for Rajdeep Sardesai. Um, I've interned for him. I worked for Arnab Goswami. I've reported for him. I'm one of the few Pakistani journalists who's reported from Indian news desks in Mumbai and and Delhi. ठीक है तो more on that later. उधर भी pressure आता है और corporate side से आता है. Marketing chief आता है और Arnab के desk पे ऐसे फेंकता है report. मेरे सामने हुआ हुआ है कि ये क्या? Right? तो वो वो by the way marketing chief Pakistan में by the way उसका होती है उसकी तपड़ होती है मगर वो अजहर अब्बास के डेस्क पे ऐसे रिपोर्ट नहीं फेंक सकता ठीक है तो पाकिस्तानी मीडिया हैज दैट बट मुशरफ साहब मिसकैलकुलेट कर गए कि पाकिस्तानी सहाफियों को वो 1950 साठ से की दहाई से कोड़े खाते आ रहे हैं ठीक है इनको मैं अगर चैनल दे दिया उनकी तनख्वाहें बीस हजार से दस लाख हो गई या ज्यादा तो ये एकदम मेरी साइड पे नहीं आएंगे दे नॉट गोइंग टू बिकम माय चेयर लीडर्स जस्ट बिकॉज द मनी इज बेटर एंड जस्ट बिकॉज द रेटिंग्स आर बेटर एंड जस्ट बिकॉज द कार्स आर बिगर ये स्टेट मिसकैलकुलेट कर गई 2000s में सो मच सो दैट द लॉयर्स मूवमेंट व्हिच इवेंचुअली लेड टू द डिमाइज ऑफ जनरल मुशर्रफ एंडेड अप पुटिंग अस वेयर वी आर 
Unfortunately, though, uh, the lawyers' movement and the demise of Musharraf, the assassination of Benazir, and the coverage of the Mumbai attacks, those three, I would call it the holy trifecta. There was a national security issue, there was an international security issue, right? And there was a national polit political issue. Those three things happened in quick succession. Was that. And that's why the se, media had to make, some people in media decided to make their choice, ki, we will play ball. And some people said, no, we're just going to keep on doing what we were deregulated to do, which is tell a story. And that happens that some people become pro-ban, but some people didn't play ball. And that's where the violence escalates again. That's so help me, help me understand that this then within that context, right? So the golden age ends and we've sort of gone about 12 years, 13 years since then, 2007, 2008. How are these red lines, what you can and cannot say, what you can and cannot openly talk about, or even like allude to, how are these lines set within this media context? And I'm just curious to understand this from a perspective of, that if Hamid Meer and he decides that I have to show Balochistan on and that will come to me after pressure. How does he, is it just instinct? Is it, are things communicated overtly, covertly that he and his team know that these jo things, or when you are doing your own show, like there are certain things you cannot say, even though you may believe certain things to not be true, but you have to toe a certain line. Okay, so I don't know uh, how um, uh, Hamid Meer uh, Saab has uh, gone through his uh, pressure regime. I have um, um, covered the attacks on him, um, the semi-quasi attacks on him, um, physical and uh, otherwise. But let's not make it about an individual, right? Let's just give you the bigger picture. So this is not about, this is not the Hamid Mir show. This is definitely not the Vajat Khan show, right? But the bigger picture is that there's two or three different categories of, uh, uh, of journalists and there's two or three different categories of pressure which are applied to those journalists, right? So, uh, firstly, if you work for one of the major networks, right, um, especially in this day and age, uh, chances are that you won't get the call if you're being stubborn about a particular issue. Chances are that your boss, your owner, Sitsa, right, uh, will get the call. So, Mia Ahmed will get the call. Shaquille Rahman will get the call, right? And when they, they don't play ball, then we sort of know where they end up. For example, just bring up uh, Shaquille Rahman on Google and you will know exactly what happens when the when your boss doesn't uh, well, doesn't play ball, right? So um, based on that, uh, still because of their muscle, because they can still make the headlines. Today, Ahmed Mir has, uh, uh, when uh, I think uh, uh, he's been, he's made the Guardian, he's made the AP, he's made the Washington Post, and those are just the, 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 the articles I read about, about the man, right? And his show. So a uh, itsy bitsy, teeny weeny show in the scheme of the world, I'm sure in Pakistan, Capital Talk is a great show, right? I'm not a personal fan, but watch the rating. So it is the, one of the most watched shows in the country. However, uh, in the greater scheme of things, it doesn't come close to, you know, like racial, uh, um, uh, kya hai iska? Rachel Maddow. For uh, Rachel MSNBC. Maddow uh, on, on MSNBC. It doesn't come close to Tucker Carlson. It doesn't come close to these guys in terms of revenues or money. But guess what? It's in the papers. And Rachel Maddow is not. Ahmed's in the papers. And he's in the papers because his show is pushed back against an, the world's fifth largest military. Right? But um, still, that notoriety gives Hamid and co protection. Um Yes, Hamid's been attacked personally, so maybe we should focus down on him. But him having survived that attack and the pushback of that attack um, in 2014, in the April, uh, in April 2014, really changed Hamid surviving. Really changed the game for us, Suzette, all of us, because had Hamid died, it would have sent a different message. But him living, coming back, returning to tell the tale, and from what it seems, coming back even stronger to tell the tale. Right, um, uh, really, really is remarkable in terms of Pakistani media and Pakistani journalists flexing their muscle. But um, Hamid's in a way lucky. He's a victim. I would say he's a victim of his own success. Right, 
because there's a lot of men and women who are not as successful or famous uh, as Hamid. And those are the ones I worry about because those are the ones who, um, who when they get killed or abducted or picked up or beaten up or threatened or harassed or fired, um, those are the ones we don't hear about. Uh, those are ones who just go away. Um, a lot of these journalists are second tier journalists. Um, they uh, are in the boonies, they're in the countryside. If you just look up the CPJ's assessment of uh, how rural area based Pakistani journalists and even Afghan journalists for that matter, um, how they suffer versus more urban based journalists, then you will realize that there's a divide. If you work for a major organization, if you're in the cities, you're relatively safer. You're still under pressure. You still get the call. And uh, it's happened to all of us um, to directly answer your question. SMS aate hain, WhatsApp aate hain, phone aate hain, ghar ke saamne gaadiyan aate hain. Phir koi rishidar ka phone a jata hai because he gets the call. And wo kehta hai ki yaar, ya kisi usually colleague ka phone aata hai. Wo kehta hai yaar, lale, na kar. Tweet delete kar de. Ya, <laughs> Kabi kabi khud kisi afsar ka phone a jata hai. Kata hai, Waj, ye kya hai? Ye kyun kya rahe ho? You know, delete karo yaar, kya hai? You know, so uh, it really depends on uh, who you are, where you're from. But I don't mean to um, um, be um, casual about this, but a lot of people don't get the call as that. A lot of people don't get the Waj, kya kar rahe ho? Uh, inside a call. Um... A lot of people just get hit um, where it hurts without, uh, without expecting it. So let's talk about then the structural issue, right? State run media, state ke upar pressure aata hai. state doesn't tow the line, ends up in jail. If they tow the line, they obviously tell you whoever the journalist doing the story is you know, on print or in or electronic media, they have to figure out how to, you know, not keep talking about that issue. You said that, you know, corporatized media could have innovated, could have made itself more resilient, etc. I look across the border in India. I mean, not literally, I'm in America like you are. But you look at the at the Indian media, corporatized, but also co-opted, particularly co-opted on the crony capitalist side, right? So wh- why is it or are you of the opinion, if at all, that the corporate media model perhaps may have its own set of challenges, but at least may become more resistant to some of these pressures that come. And I ask this question not only because of the issues with corporate media around the world, but also because, let's be honest, Pakistan's economy is not that dynamic. So can it even sustain a corporate media setup in the first place? Good question. Excellent question. Critical. First of all, uh, India is not the answer, nor is Indian media. As you have, you've used a a crucial word here, um, cronyism. Corporate cronyism is alive and thriving in India. The Modi uh, 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 corporate machine is, is, is a very, very ugly being, right? And the way um, they've supported, they, I'm not going to, again, uh, it's not my business to state the name of individuals or companies, but a casual uh, uh, um, research grind will tell you who, 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 who supports Modi um, and who supports the BJP and who supports the RSS, and who supports that narrative uh, in India. Um, uh, Not to take a dump on uh, uh, my friends who are in Indian media, there's a lot of brave Indian media journalists, um, Indian media journalists, um, but um, increasingly so. Over the last few decades, um, Indian media, as you said, has become co-opted, especially over the last few years, rather, not the last few decades, I stand corrected. Modi ke zamane mein, especially corporate India, Nijo se backing the year, that defeats the argument which we might perceive, we perceive to be making. Ke yaar, uh, Seth sahab se jab aap uh, corporate ho jate ho, to aap bach jate ho. Nahin. Magar, ek cover aata hai. Ek cover is liya aata hai, kyunke all of a sudden, uh, think of it like this way. If there is a one window operation, if there is one guy you call, Right? Parse karo ke aap, um, aap general X ho. Right? And general X ko general Y phone kare. 
और कहे कि यार ये क्यों हमारी बेजती कर रहा है मैं भी अपनी बेगम के साथ बैठ के टीवी देख रहा हूँ क्या बकवास है बंद करो उसे अच्छा फौज में ऐसी बात होती है ठीक है बिकॉज वो फौजी है ठीक है जनैल है लाइक वॉज गोइंग ऑन अच्छा अब इन अ नॉर्मल कंट्री दिस वुड हैपन बट In the normal country, Pakistan is not a normal country, right? So, up, this might get me in trouble, might as well. But when you are General X, now you got to make a call because General Y has called, right? And, and you got to make a call. You who are you going to call? You know, the chain of command follow can be. Uh, you got to make a call, right? You can't say you can't call like maybe you'll call Colonel A, right? Maybe you won't. Right? Maybe you'll call Sait A. Right? Maybe you'll call Anchor A. Uh, you're not going to call Producer A. You're not going to call Editor A. Right? You're going to either call your number two or the guy who runs the show in some particular organization. That is the the ugly irony and yet the reality of the way Pakistani media works. Right? So, would you rather call? A person, or would you rather send uh, a, a letter to the board of directors of a certain listed company? Let's say Viacom owns Jio, Viacom owns CBS, right? Let's say Viacom realizes that yeah, listen, two hundred million people, these guys get forty uh, percent of the eyeballs, decent company, nineteen uh, hours of airtime, fresh airtime a day. uh it's a 2 billion dollar industry this is a company which owns 500 million dollars these are true stats whether we go check them out right uh, it's a 2 billion dollar industry sure that's not, not not that big but you know this is who are these guys who oh, who is this shakil rahman who is it 4 billion they control 400 million bucks of a 2 billion dollar industry let's buy them out now viacom if it had common sense or interest or both would do that would have that discussion right and viacom would buy jio out tomorrow and khalil ur rahman or shikil ur rahman rather would would be living on a yacht and not in uh, that uh, uh, piece of real estate he lives on outside lahore which he's gotten into trouble for because evidently nawaz sharif gave it to him right and <laughs> do you think general x is going to call up viacom I would also say like you you've taken it to the viacom level i would say if it was a publicly traded company sure. even then the general would have second thoughts not because the board of directors may have influence but primarily also because his or his family an extended family maybe he himself would have shares in mutual funds that trade in the stock of that company and if you take it down put it on the 100 channel or cancel its advertising contracts the next morning the share price is going to collapse right. which is directly your loss right so you really taken it to the next level of corporate war gaming um which would be that there's a con- there's a conflict of interest and the conflict of interest would thus um trigger or rather not trigger the g- general x to listen to general y which would probably get general x court martial but that's a whole other conversation was that however all i'm trying to tell you is that it's whether it's viacom based in new york city or whether it's pakistan's viacom right we have we have serious movers too we have uh, our company Engro is our Viacom, right? Engro makes everything. It gives a, it makes our chocolate milk. It make and it makes our energy, right? Tomorrow, Eng, who's stopping uh, uh, Engro uh, uh, from taking over Jio tomorrow? They've got the big bucks, you know. Engro can send uh, Mil Khairul Rahman, uh, Shikil Rahman rather, on a yacht and say, "Enjoy yourself. We're done. We're going to take this over. Run this like a proper shop." But who's going to call Engro? Because Engro is a large. It's a different chain. CEO ni hai na there's Engro Corp ka CEO hai right not to take any names but I'm not going to because he's a friend so I'm not going to get him personally involved this is a theoretical argument so Engro Engro Corp ka CEO hai main uske niche sath company hai to ye I'm assuming art ek doodh banati hai ek sabziyan banati hai fertilizer banati hai ek LNG terminal chalati hai acha to acha wo wo independently kaam karti hai to kal agar Engro ne bhi le liya farz karo Jio ko theek hai to wo nahi phone kar sakta अपनी आठवीं कंपनी को कि यार ये बंद करो दैट्स नॉट हाउ दे वर्क दैट्स नॉट हाउ दे वर्क तो इवन पाकिस्तान में अगर कल ये वॉल्व कर जाएं पब्लिकली लिस्टेड हो जाएं इनके स्टॉक हो जाएं इनके बीओजी हो जाए ठीक है इनके बीओडीओ इनके बोर्ड 
nobody will be able to hurt them through that single window operation of coercion acha ab dusri taraf aate hain ke rule of law and violence accountability to wo to phir wo to koi uska koi uh, uh, i guess koi ultimate solution nahi hai magar it can only be assumed that in an organization in a media uh, where um uh, in a, which exists in an in an environment uh, with insurances in a system uh, which has an inherent um i guess which is structurally less i think the right term would be vulnerable um jidhar aapki uh, um following um aapki uh, rule of law accountability zyada set up ho marwa to koi bhi kahin bhi kisi ko bhi sakta hai agar wo sawal ka jawab main tumhe nahi de sakta usse magar beizti koi bhi kahin bhi kisi bhi koi koi bhi kar sakta hai social media mein aapke khilaf amerika mein donald trump amerika ka sadar ek wo ek anchor ki beizti kar sakta hai jo usne ki bhi hai सदर ट्रंप में मगर ओवरऑल आप मीडिया चैनल बंद नहीं कर सकते हम इस वक्त दो किस्म की बातें कर रहे हैं एक वे टॉक मॉट बैलेंस विच आई डोंट हैव एन आंसर फॉर यू राइट बट इन टर्म्स ऑफ कोअर्जन चैनल बंद करना रेवेन्यू स्ट्रीम्स बंद करना कोअर्स करना एडिटोरियल को फोर्स करना दैट्स अ होल ऑफ द स्टोरी एंड आई थिंक कि अगर ये इवॉल्व करें ग्रो करें स्ट्रक्चरली ज्यादा अपने आप में इन्वेस्ट करें तो फिर शायद ये थोड़े जैसे ज्यादा प्रोटेक्ट होंगे मगर इट डजेंट मीन के ये सुपर डुपर बन जाएंगे बिकॉज देन दगली एग्जाम्पल ऑफ इंडिया इज राइट नेक्स्ट डोर बिकॉज फिर आप को ऑप्ट हो जाते हो वे द रेटिंग मनी इज वे द एक्शन इज मोदी को वो इसलिए नहीं सपोर्ट करते स्टील कंग्रामेट इंडिया की मोदी बहुत अच्छा आदमी है मोदी को इसलिए सपोर्ट करते हैं ब्रेक्स यार इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बनाता है इकोनॉमी आगे चल रही है प्लेटफॉर्म लाइक जियो और समा और पॉडकास्ट एंड रीच एन ऑडियंस नॉट ह्यूज बट स्टिल सिग्निफिकेंट others can go online and have their youtube channel stalat husain has done it others in india have done it the print.in with shekhar gupta um etc etc around the world you find examples how does that play into this structural evolution and the structural tension within pakistan in terms of not only picking sides but also the threat that people have especially bloggers vloggers who are maybe more outspoken when they go on youtube and facebook than they are on the mainstream television waves Well, first of all, we're going to go above your one hour, uh, so I don't know whether you're going to run That's this longer. Fine. Or... Yeah, yeah, we can right. keep going. Right. Uh, well, uh, that is a topic close to my heart. It's something I've been um, studying right since uh, my uh, time at the Kennedy School in 2011, which is when uh, uh, social media um, and the social media-based journalist was uh, blowing up in Pakistan, uh, literally and figuratively, um, unfortunately. but uh, uh, i'm going to speak in this there's a lot big question so i'm going to give you the answer in tweet size points all right first of all if you are only on social media in pakistan if you are a social media journalist you're a blogger quote and quote for those who can't see this uh, broadcast if you're a blogger if you're a uh, youtuber right without the the cover the institutional cover of an organization you're in trouble you end up like matiullah jan matiullah is a lot of things um not a personal fan again right but um it's inherent for me to tell his story because he's a he's a journalist and that's what journalists do we we tell stories which are important and his is an important story um and it is incumbent upon me to for his right to tell stories as well to be protected as much as i uh, may not see eye to eye with him on several issues starting from perhaps a favorite color um to everything else but his right to tell stories must be protected and i will protect it till i die here's the thing if you are on your own um 
just cruising around social media. It doesn't matter whether you have 10 followers or half a million followers. You don't have institutional coverage, you're in trouble. Um, the powers that be, um, as well as whoever uh, these people, known or unknown, kya naam, kya kehte hai? Naamaloom afraad, is that what they Khalai call Makhluk. Khalai Makhluk, Naamaloom afraad, whatever, right? Uh, but um, uh, everybody can and does take advantage of uh, um, people who don't have institutional cover. Now, when you do have institutional cover, we've already covered that in the first part of this interview. When you do have institutional cover, it is the uh, weaknesses as well as the personnel of that institutional cover which are exploited to approach that institution. But when there's no one to approach, then guess what? And they come knocking right on your door. Right? Knock, knock, knock. And they, then, they'll knock if they're trying to be courteous. <laughs> Otherwise, well, it might not even be a knock. Well, well um, let's, let's stick to the facts, right? Um, 109 journalists have been killed since I started covering the war on terror. Uh, as a junior at the University of Michigan uh, in 2001 in Afghanistan, Pakistan, right? Uh, till date, uh, 53 of them, 52 of them have been in uh, Afghanistan. And 57 of them have been in Pakistan. Yeah. Some of these men, and they're mostly men, now, unfortunately, uh, in Afghanistan, women are being targeted as well. That's a whole other story. But uh, um, the story is that 50-60 people are killed and 50-60 people are killed. That's the Lagbhag stat. And in those 50-60 people, more than are killed and our are killed. Okay, the difference is that their more people are killed उधर जंग लगी हुई है ठीक है उधर एक दिन में 10 10 बंदे भी मारे गए हैं व्हिच इज अ बिग स्टैट ठीक है क्योंकि एक बम फटा फिर दूसरा फटा फिर तीसरा फट गया तो इस इस किस्म के खौफनाक अटैक्स होते हैं क्योंकि वो एक जंग है ठीक है मगर इधर जंग इधर तीन बम अटैक्स नहीं हो रहे इधर टारगेटेड हिट्स हो रही हैं इसमें फर्क है राइट जंग इधर भी लगी हुई है मगर इधर एक खौफनाक किस्म की एक अलग किस्म की खौफनाक किस्म की जंग लगी इधर शायद ट्रिपल बॉम्बिंग नहीं हो रही कॉम्प्लेक्स अटैक नहीं हो रहा ठीक है इधर इधर आइसिस आपके तीन जर्नलिस्ट को टारगेट नहीं कर रही आपके दफ्तर के सामने इधर आइसिस नहीं है शुक्र है अल्लाह का शुक्र है और कुछ हो रहा है और कोई चीज आपको टारगेट कर रही है और लोग आपको टारगेट कर रहे ये इनहेरेंट फर्क है स्टैटिस्टिक्स सिमिलर है मगर एग्जीक्यूशन स्टाइल एसओपी डिफरेंट है इसको समझना इंपॉर्टेंट है सबसे जो डेंजरस चीज है जो जो लोगों को समझ नहीं आ रही सुनने वालों को आई एम गोइंग टू से दिस अगेन क्लियरली पाकिस्तान्स किल रेशियो ऑफ जर्नलिस्ट्स हैज प्रीटी मच बीन द सेम एज द एज द जर्नलिस्ट किल इन अफगानिस्तान इन द लास्ट टू डेकेड्स हियर्स द डिफरेंस अफगानिस्तान्स अंडर फॉरेन ऑक्युपेशन कोड एंड कोड right in the world's in america's longest running war quote unquote right with hundreds of thousands of foreign troops deployed quote unquote in fighting multiple insurgencies in multiple provinces quote unquote that's a one sense a full blown war it's one of the world's messiest wars it's been going on for a while we're not at war technically but we've got the same number of similar number of killed in fact more killed journalists here some can somebody explain that to me right those are numbers that's not me i didn't make that up that's just what's happened now can i make can asad tour in a worst case scenario make up stuff sure let's just assume that asad beat himself up theoretical with respect again not someone i see adwai with frankly he's not someone who sees adwai with me i think that's the issue i see adwai with all these guys i see where all of these guys are coming from right they might not see I do I with me. Sure, their problem, their loss. But, and I know you're going to get to that question too, is there? So I'm going to, I'm waiting for that one. That's coming up next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know where you're going with that smile. I can see, I can see that smile. But again, Asad Tour's right to exist, coexist and tell his story and spread his message and tell, do his reporting is I will defend that till the day I die. Right? Um, as um, Eisenhower used to say about Ayub Khan, he's a son of a bitch, but he's our son of a bitch, right? Not saying anything about Asatur, right? But that's just 
that's that's my mentality about people even people i don't disagree with or agree with uh, i don't agree with necessarily however we're not making up stories we're just like comparing like this stat to stat so the statistics are really bothersome in terms of um um numbers killed but the statistics the stats are even more bothersome when you realize that there's a disparity in terms of urban versus rural institutional cover versus non institutional cover and what we've seen is that to answer your question even more directly and precisely is that if you're on your own if you're just some youtuber blogger twitterati type you know if you're like what's her name uh, that um, uh, woman who uh, was was abducted in lahore gul uh, uh, bukhari gul bukhari right gul right if you're gul right i mean gul is she's a she's she's a power to reckon with she's a force to be dealt with Right? You you can't discount gold. No, gold doesn't work right for a major publication. Gold does not have her own TV show. Gold is not a mainstream journal by its very archaic definition. The mainstream journal is irrelevant because gold has something to say. She says it loudly. She says it proudly. You or I might agree or disagree. That's not the point. The point is somebody picked her up and got into trouble for it. They had to let her go. Um, but that's because a few things happened. Gul had institutional cover. Gul was a Brit. That helped. Gul lived in Kent. She had influential friends and neighbors in Lahore. That helped too. What if uh, Gul was uh, lived in Samnabad and was a I don't know was a churi, quote unquote. What if she was Christian? Yeah, <laughs> same city, different and neighborhood, I mean, different religion. Stuff. You mentioned right. rural a few times, right? We've seen this happen in uh, interior sin, rural sin. Like journalists go missing, they end up dead, and nothing ever comes of it because it's just there's no influence there. Or subsequent zada rural sin, uh, rural Balochistan. Let's not even let's not even open that can of worms. Um, and um, NWFP in the especially in the post, uh, uh, ye jo patano ki jo movement chali hai PTM, especially in the post PTM world. जो पठान जर्नलिस्ट के साथ हुआ है, the less said the better यार, मगर bottom line is um, there is a divide. Um, think of working for a channel as an insurance policy, not a very good insurance policy, but a relatively safer one. But if you're on your own, you're on your own. Even though Asad Tour bridges that divide, वो आज टीवी के लिए भी काम करता है, जिधर मैंने सुना है वो पता नहीं एडिटर है, प्रोड्यूसर है, कुछ है, मगर अगर शायद वो टॉक शो होस्ट होता, तो नहीं है. तो शायद उसे थोड़ी सी ज्यादा इज्जत मिलती तो बिकॉज वो एडिटर है या प्रोड्यूसर है या जो भी है उससे शायद उसे थोड़ी सी कम इज्जत मिली है अल्लाह उसे बहुत इज्जत दे मगर जिस किस्म की इज्जत मिली है उसे वो इज्जत ना किसी को दे किसी मेरे दुश्मन को भी ना दे ना तुम्हारे दुश्मन को दे Uzair usually talks about the economy why the hell are we going on and on about the media I think my own reason for that is that Social economic progress cannot happen in a country where the media is under the pump, or the media or journalists are concerned about their lives and their safety and their security. Because the important stories that need to be told, whether it's about corruption, whether it's about the abuse of power, whether it is about reforms or the need for reforms, or informing people about what's going on in their own backyard, those stories just cannot be told. and so long as that does not happen you cannot simply progress i mean you look at what's happened i mean we talk we talked about india at length but look around in hungary look around in the philippines look around even in the united states for example with what fox news has done when you go get co-opted or when you start being pressured to tow a certain line a lot of bad things happen from a public policy and an economic point of view and i think that's why it's important to talk about the subject um and so just i just wanted to say that in case people are wondering i want to second that was there and i want to second that with a with a with a some sort of recollection that uh, for someone who's uh, enjoyed and has been privileged to be a part of this great media machine i've lost we've lost cnbc this is a business channel it's stopped we've lost business plus it's become a goddamn drama fest um uh, we the, the there's no real I'm not gonna. I love Ahmed Zubairi. He's a classmate of mine. I I I will go to bat for him any day of the week. But his newspaper, the Business Recorder, sucks. Um, B Recorder, Muf me Air Blue me, butter out that because circulation nahi hai, right? Arch TV when it started, and I've been a part of it. I'm very proud of it. 
um, uh, being a part of Arch TV. Arch TV started with the ambition of becoming a fully blown um, uh, political economy business channel. Couldn't keep up with it. Dawn TV, uh, Dawn News, um, started as Pakistan's first English language news network, which I helped launch, um, by the way, for the record. And we were going to be Pakistan's first international channel. That was we were going to be Pakistan CNN. But talk about having a global narrative, right? Right. And whether it's a global narrative or business narrative or a political economic narrative, those stories weren't told well. So it's also our fault as well. We couldn't market to our own audiences. We couldn't uh, connect with them. We couldn't resonate with them because ultimately the overarching story was one of horrible corruption and crime and national security and coups and counter coups and conspiracies and terrorism and war. And you know what? That's not business news, man. That's just news. That's just the country we live in, right? That's just, that's just the hand we were dealt, man. That's just how it is. And now, could we have been smarter editors, smarter producers, smarter anchors? Could we have told better stories for select audiences? Sure, absolutely. But it's a shame, even till today, I'm ashamed that the country's newspaper of record, and I mean that with slight irony, has like one and a half pages dedicated to business and finance. It's a shame for the world's fifth largest country which plans to be in, you know, the top 20 economies in the next decade, right? It's a shame. It's a, it's a howling shame that someone like, I don't know the, I don't know the name of the business editor of the dawn. Was that, do you? No, I knew it until Khurram was there. And then yeah, I was talking was to him and I was right? like, and then he, he was like, I'm no longer there. And I'm like, who's your replacement? <laughs> I had no idea that you had left. Right. Um, or you so are I no know longer was, I know Khurram was fired, which is another travesty. But after that, I don't know that I don't know the name of the goddamn business editor of Dawn. So that <laughs> reminds me. I mean, I was telling someone last year, a couple of years ago, when the Abrad scandal broke, the Wall Street Journal ran right. several stories. It's about to be converted into a book by the journalists who cover it. And I was in Pakistan, and I was like, "Yeah, of course, ki baat nahi hai. Ye ke jis company ne Pakistan mein sabse aada investment ki, jis privatization ki sale." Na hone ki wajah se pura jo bhanda phoot gaya, exactly, right? Ke Arif Nakhvi was making money move around accounts that he shouldn't have. They didn't have the money and everything blew up from there. Isn't it a shame that a bunch of journalists sitting in New York were able to tell a better story than Pakistani journalists sitting in Karachi where the scandal happened in their own backyard? Like the indictment in the United States names four Pakistani politicians. Isn't it a shame that no Pakistani media publication has written an investigative story about who those four men are, or at least done wow. some, some journalism around it? It's a great, shame. Great story. No, and let's let's uh, let's uh, play it even closer to heart. Let's talk about Bowl. I mean, Bowl was an open secret by the end of it, um, and I, I must uh, I must confess I was just full disclaimer. I mean, for those who don't know, I was at Bowl for a just a couple of weeks or so before I was the last guy in and the one of the first guys out. So that needs to be reiterated. But um, um, I got recruited at Bowl by my mentors who got recruited at Bowl by whoever they were recruited by. But we all believed in the in the Bowl message because Bowl was trying to break the mold. But a lot of us, including me, we didn't do our due diligence, right? We joined a network, which is, you know, screw up number one without doing a due diligence about it. And then on top of that, um, there was when Declan Watts broke that story. And by the way, I was Declan Watts called me before he broke that story. He asked me to get on the record. I remember that call. I was in my patio in Islamabad, you know, hanging out with my dog, you know, having a coffee and deck calls. It's like whatever in the afternoon. It's like, hey, mate, so uh, this is on the record. And when a friend calls you saying that, you know, alarm bells go off. And whatever, he asked me a couple of questions. I said, Deck, I don't know if, if this is on the record. I don't know if I can talk to you. Let me call my boss and get permission. I called my boss. I said, sir, ye ho rahe. And he said, koi nahi, su kar denge. Now that, that is, that's the problem. That's the problem which has led to the demise of 
partially led to the demise of the industry. That's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a certain arrogance in there. Um, there's also a certain um, lack of understanding of how global systems work. Uh, one of the saddest things and the reason, one of the reasons I've left the Pakistani media was there is because it's become very insular, right? It's become, it's, it hasn't grown, it hasn't expanded. Media is supposed to be at the cutting edge of change, of, 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 of you know, technological change, of editorial change. We're supposed to have a pulse on society, right? We're supposed to have a finger on the pulse of society. Agar aaj zyadatar log Instagram se or Twitter se apni khabar le rahe so we better have a goddamn Instagram and Twitter account, yaar. We better. Magar nahi hai. Nahi hai Twitter account. Ya nahi hai Instagram account. So, phir, so these are the sort of bosses and issues I struggled with. That's why I left because I thought, and other reasons, which we can talk so about speaking, later. Speaking, yeah, I want to <laughs> jump to your own personal but story. But all, right? I mean, all I'm saying is, it's our fault too. I'm not going to sit here and defend the the khalai makhluk or whatever the hell uh, uh, you call them uh, kya bola tha? Ye na i called it khalai makhluk you said namalu mufrad no i'm going to call them the powers that be right because i my, my my data is scant on the intelligence community the ic by the way for those who don't know the intelligence community in pakistan is a varied uh, and complicated animal there's several intelligence agencies. There's not just the ISI. The ISI was founded in the 1950s. Our ISI has six to seven wings that we know about. As far as we are concerned, there's only one internal political wing. The rest of the ISI looks externally. Okay. Yes, they have a media wing, but the media wing is inherently like feeds them data, right? The media wing does not go out and start and, and kill, kills journalists for a living. That's not what they do, right? There's serving. Uh, officers, there's retired officers, there's middle managers, there's civilians, there's contractors, blaming the ISI and just the ISI on everything which happens in the Islamic Republic of Pakistan is unfair. There's other intelligence organizations you may have not heard about. Um, blaming just the uh, the horrible ISI for everything is unfair. Uh, it's also bad reporting. I'm not saying that the ISI is not to blame for this or to blame for this. I'm just saying that it's a complicated animal. The IC in itself, by most estimates, which are within the field, is that there's 150,000 people in this country who, in, your, in, in Pakistan, who are involved in the intelligence community. Some of them are freelancers. Some of them are contractors. Some of them are serving military officials. Some of them are retired military officials. Some of them are corrupt. Some of them are horrible. Some of them are murderers. Who are you going to blame? Where does it start? Because the buck does not stop in one place this it's too decentralized so i need to be very clear and you need to be very clear ki jab ye hai, it's not ke, uh, uh, general faz ka phone gaya tha. Gaya ho, mujhe pata. Magar i'm pretty sure ke ek bande ka phone jata. wheels within wheels bhi um, a lot of us are worried about it because jitna decentralized organization hoti hai, jitna bada idara hota hai, utni cheeze, um, out of control hoti hai. Either way, it's it, violence must be condemned and whatever happened to Tur and whatever is happening to Hamid is unacceptable. Just ne bhi kiya. ISA ne kiya, NASA ne kiya, just ne bhi kiya. CIA ne kiya, KGB ne kiya, just ne bhi, jinne bhi kitta hai, galat kitta hai. Right? <laughs> Before we close this off, and this has been great, we've gone over time, but I've had a wonderful time talking to you. So you left Pakistan recently, you're now in New York. When you were in Pakistan, Mahaz and other shows, there was a there still is a perception, right, among journalists and outside the journalist community that you were one of the ones that were closer to the powers that be, as you call them. What was so what was that like? You were you obviously covering the war and you just did some fantastic reporting from the front lines that at least to me when I was in grad school was really informative because it helped me understand the conflict better and have a front bird's eye view or a front line view of what was going on. But at the end of the day, still there was this perception and there still is. So what has that been like working in Pakistan? You went to bowl, et cetera, et cetera, in terms of your own perception of being close to the powers that be. Uh, there's a lot of that's a very that's a fully loaded question, as they'd say. So let me uh, let me break it down for you. Um, 
Okay. So I'm going to start with an anecdote. And this anecdote is around 200 something years old. Okay. Or I'll Urdu me sunaunga. Or in English me bhi sunaunga. Shayad main isme Pashto Punjabi bhi bolu. John Adams was one of America's founding fathers. Okay. And uh, uh, we, in fact, you said, I think we were in Boston when I was in Harvard and you were getting a lot of money from some consultancy. You were getting a lot of money from some consultancy. You were getting a lot of money from some consultancy. What did you start doing? I was in Harvard and you were getting a lot of money from some consultancy. I remember that it was a recruiting interview. Yes, it was a different story with Samar TV. Okay, listen. So John Adams was a Harvard man. And he was one of the founding fathers of America. And he was a, he was, he was a lawyer and he was quite useless at war. Right? He was quite useless. He was a man of letters. So George Washington, who was the founder of America, was in America. He was in America. He was in America. He पागलों वाली जंग लगी हुई थी तो एक दिन वाशिंगटन आके कहता है जॉन को कहता है जॉन ओए तू क्या तू इधर करता क्या है मेरी फौज में कहता सर मैं तो कुछ नहीं करता मैं तो लिखता पढ़ता हूं कहता है यार तू बहुत ही फारिग आदमी है बिल्कुल फजूल आदमी है तू तुझे कोई जुबान जुबान बोलनी आती है तो कहता है जी सर मुझे फ्रेंच आती है कहता है ठीक है एक काम कर फौरी तौर पे तू जहाज में बैठ शिप में ठीक है और तू फ्रांस जा कहता सर मैं फ्रांस जाके क्या करूंगा मैं तो उधर जंग लड़ने आया हूं आपके साथ कहता नहीं नहीं तुझे कोई जंग जंग नहीं लड़नी आती बिल्कुल फजूल वकील है कोई तुझे बंदूक नहीं चलानी आती तू एक्चुअली फ्रांस जा फ्रांस जाके ना तू वॉर एफर्ट के लिए पैसे रेज कर दफा हो जाता लेट द लीव अस लेट अस फाइट द वॉर कहता जी सर डन हो गया जॉन एडम्स गेट्स ऑन दैट शिप ही गोस टू पेरिस टू to uh, uh, raise funds for the American revolutionary war effort was there. This is a true story. I'm not making this up. Okay. He lands in Paris. He finally ends up in like the defense phase five for the Karachi Wallas. They'll get what I'm saying. He finally ends up in the defense phase five at this very, very uh, high society dinner in Paris. Okay. And France is important because France and Grezon ka mukhalif hai. Thik hai, jaysay aaj kal Chien Amerikiyon ka mukhalif hai. Thik hai, to udar baut saare loog hai, achha, kyunke Ameriki hai ye, to Amerika was like Pakistan at that time, kyunke ye suna hi nahi hai, fuzul si jagah hai, pata nahi kya ladte rahte hai, koon loog hai. Backward loog wapis jang jang chhedne lag gai. Backward and ladte shahte hai, kuch kama ta. To isse kisi ne baat nahi ki na, John Adams chup chap na khana khata raha hai, छुरी कांटे से कोई इसे बात नहीं कर रहा फाइनली एक बहुत खूबसूरत एक दोशीजा जो है उसने इस पे तर्स खाया और उसने कहा कि भाईजान आपका क्या नाम है उसने अपना नाम बताया जॉन आदम इसने कहा आपको फ्रेंच बोलनी आती है कहता जी मुझे आती है कहती गुड 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 तो आप पढ़े लिखे हैं कहता जी मैं गलती से जी मैं पढ़ा लिखा हूं कहती किधर के पढ़े हैं कहता जी ये यूनिवर्सिटी है छोटी सी अमेरिका में उसका नाम हार्वर्ड है मैं हार्वर्ड का पढ़ा हूं कहती अच्छा अच्छा हार्वर्ड में फ्रेंच पढ़ाते हैं कहता जी गलती से पढ़ा देते हैं कहती अच्छा अच्छा और क्या पढ़ाते हैं आप क्या पढ़ते हैं हार्वर्ड में एंड दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट इज दैट आई एम गोइंग टू पैराफ्रेज तो कहती है व्हाट डू यू स्टडी मिस्टर एडम्स मिशो एडम्स राइट तो जॉन एडम्स कहता है अमेरिका का होने वाला सदर कॉन्टेक्स्ट सुनो अमेरिका का होने वाला सदर है अमेरिका में जंग लगी हुई है द फाइटिंग द ब्रिटिश क्राउन इन व्हाट वुड एंड अप क्रिएटिंग द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स सक्सेसफुली तो सोचता है और उसे पता है जॉन आर्म्स को कि इस वक्त मैंने अगर स्क्रू अप कर दिया ना कोई पैसे नहीं मिलने और मैंने खाली हाथ वापस जाने और जॉर्ज वॉशिंगटन चपेड़ लगाएगा मुझे ठीक है तो दिस ना तो जंग करने आती है ना तो जो फंडिंग करने आती है तो वापस भेज देगा राइट वो मुझे अफ्रीका भेज देगा तो जॉन आर्म्स कहता है वेल कहती है कि व्हाट डू यू स्टडी मिस्टर एडम्स तो कहता है वेल मैडम आई एम अ स्टडी सोल्जर्स एंड सोल्जरिंग एंड वॉर्स एंड वॉरियर्स सो दैट माय सन इफ ही मेक्स इट टू द सर्टेन एज कैन स्टडी इकोनॉमिक्स ज्योग्राफी हिस्ट्री एटसेट्रा सो दैट हिज सन कैन स्टडी स्कल्पटिंग 
painting and the other beautiful and liberal arts that you French have now perfected over centuries. Because I come from a revolutionary state, a state at war with itself. Tika, that for me, when I read that, was there as a younger man, I realized that Pakistan is that revolutionary state at war with itself. I must, I realized when I started this, this job, um, I realized and I had arguments with everybody from my wife to my colleagues, to my friends, that I do I मैं क्यों नहीं एसी में बैठ के कराची में काम कर रहा टॉक शो कर रहा मैं क्यों कश्मीर जा रहा हूं जिधर इंडियन आर्टिलरी ऊपर से आ रही है जा रही है ठीक है या उधर लड़ाई हो रही है तालिबान वाली साइड पे वेस्टर्न फ्रंट पे या कोटा वाली साइड पे एम आई एडिक्टेड टू द एक्शन यस देयर इज अ पर्सनल साइड टू इट बट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंटली Understanding the wars and warriors and the soldiers and the soldiering of Pakistan is understanding Pakistan. You cannot discount this army. You cannot discount and wish away the Pakistani military. It is the world's fifth largest military, but it's also a very important political organization in the country. Now, unless you get to know them, understand them, and are able to associate their stories with the national mainstream story and topic of the day, you're doing yourself a disservice. If you only see, if you only see them through the Ayub Khan, Ziaul Haq, Yahya Khan, Parvez Musharraf prism, then frankly, you're stupid. You're not a good journalist. If you do not understand, if you do not know the name of the commander of the 10 core of the Pakistan army, Uzair, you're not a Pakistani journalist. Because the 10 core, is guess what? Guess what the 10 core's job is? The 10 core's job is dual. Its job is to defend you against a strike formation from India in Kashmir. And it's also tasked to take over your, your, your democratically elected government tomorrow through its triple one brigade. It's two work. It's work you have to save it, it's work you have to kill it. It's designation. So if you don't understand, if you haven't been inside the 10 core HQ, and just to, just to observe as a fly on the wall, ki kaam kaise karte hai? Mere paji. And the best part and the worst part is that people, unfortunately, including the Forge, and this is the worst part, but it's also the best part because a lot of friends like even perhaps yourself, I'm not casting any uh, allegations here, but a lot of people think that reporting on the army is reporting for the army. I draw that line. And when officers and men of the Pakistani military have drawn that, have, have not recognized that line with me, I have drawn that line with them too. I've drawn that line with my bosses. I've drawn that line with my fans. I've drawn that line with my friends. I've drawn that line with my family, right? Um, there is a defense reporting um, culture in every country. Unfortunately for Pakistan, the defense reporting culture is a partisan culture. It's a very you are with us or against us culture uh, propagated by mostly members of civil society and the press in a very nihilistic manner because frankly, I don't blame them because they have been targeted by the military in a nihilistic manner. They have to start from a zero sum game because uh, there's no trust. There's a trust deficit. As one of the few journalists in the last decade, decade and a half, who managed to out of scratch craft a beat, where, which culminated in 1718, which was the prime of my Pakistani reporting, where I interviewed in 1617, 18, I interviewed Rahil Sharif. Asif Zardari, Nawaz Sharif, and Imran Khan in the same like 18 months. That is credibility. That is not being close to the powers that be. Finally, you are only as good as the sources you have. That's what journalism is. Treating them from the prism of a zero-sum game where 
सो सो वॉट यार ये फौजी है वो चौकीदार है वो वो झाड़ू मारता है यू गॉड एन यू गॉड एन नो यू गॉड नो ऑल ऑफ यू कॉन्ट सेट दैर ऑन योर प्रिटी पिडेस्टल ऑफ सिविल सोसाइटी एंड डिस एंगेज फ्रॉम एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच द वर्ल्ड लीडिंग सुपर पावर्स आर फोर्स टू एंगेज विद मैन so what are you thinking yes it's 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 it, is it is it is it is it an organization which must be fair clearly i mean we're all fearful of 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 the firepower that they bring to the table but if you have nothing to hide if you're not corrupt if you're fair in your craft if you believe in yourself if you believe in allah if you believe in your story mujhe aaj tak na kisi ne daraya ना डरने की मैंने कोशिश की है मुझे थ्रेट्स आई हैं मैंने उसी वक्त थ्रेट को हैंडल किया है बिकॉज इदारा बहुत बड़ा है और उसी इदारे में मैंने ए, एक अगर एक जगह से थ्रेट आई है तो मैंने दूसरी जगह से मैं कहा क्या बकवास है संभाले हैं तुम बंदे को आप हुआ है मेरे साथ और वो संभल गया मगर अगर आप समझते हैं कि हर चीज कमर जावेद बाजवा चला रहा है तो ये आपकी नाइविटी है अगर आप समझते हैं कि हर चीज कमर जावेद बाजवा पपिट मास्टर है पाकिस्तान का ये आपकी और नाइविटी है और अगर आप समझते हैं कि फौज को कवर करना गुनाह है तो फिर ये पीछे ये ये, ये डेविड सैंगर की किताब पड़ी हुई है जो पिछले साल की बेस्ट सेलर है इज द मोस्ट द मोस्ट इन्फ्लुएंशियल जर्नलिस्ट इन दिस कंट्री आर रिपोर्ट फॉर फ्रॉम द पेडागॉन यू नो दिस मतलब वो सबसे मेरे ख्याल से नेशनल सिक्योरिटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को ब्रीच करना उनसे रिपोर्ट करना उनको समझना इज कंसिडर्ड दी दीज नीज इन एनी एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वर्थ इट सोल्ट एज फार एज द न्यूज बिजनेस इज कंसर्न आई एम प्राउड ऑफ माई कवरेज अगर इससे आप समझ रहे हैं कि बजात खान टैंक पे बैठ गए मजा तो बहुत आता है टैंक पे बैठने का आपकी आपकी होंडा सिविक से ज्यादा ही मजा आता है तो वो आप अगर जलस हो रहे हो आपका मसला है बट यस yes, मैं टैंकों में बैठा हूँ मैं हेलीकॉप्टर में बैठा हूँ मैं सबमरीन में बैठा हूँ आप दोजों में बैठा हूँ शिप्स में बैठा हूँ आप जम्प ऑफ टेंस दिस गैस इट्स ग्रेट बट आई ड्रॉ द लाइन बिकॉज रिपोर्टिंग ऑन द आर्मी इज नॉट रिपोर्टिंग फॉर द आर्मी एंड वेन पीपल क्रॉस दैट लाइन विद मी आई डिसाइड टू लीव पाकिस्तान आई वॉज डन बिकॉज आई एम सोट ऑफ अ I've got zero tolerance for when push comes to shove, as far as my profession is concerned. And even today, sitting here in New York, I have not left the army. I'm still covering the army. Um, I just interviewed the former minister of Pakistan. I'm one of the few journalists. I recently interviewed the deputy uh, chief of the Indian military. This means that I'm an Indian military guy. I'm a bandha bandhya. In one year, I'm in. I mean, what is the difference? Tomorrow, I'm interviewing the NATO chief. तो अब मैं नेटो नेटो चीफ वो जो जर्नल है उसका भी बंदा बन गया कल सुबह मेरा दस बजे इंटरव्यू है तो उसका भी मैं छोटा बन गया हूँ क्या बकवास है so I think the, the one important thing you mentioned and I struggled with this too when I was doing my master's thesis research which was by the way on the evolution of Pakistan's counterinsurgency doctrine under Ayn Sharif was that for background research i would look at sort of the american evolution of coin in iraq and then in afghanistan etc and you found a lot of resources about human story right from the war about officers and soldiers and what they had done and these journalists who had embedded i personally still to this day find it a shame ke 10 20 saal ho gaye for the war in the western front been going on even this month this year soldiers have died on the front lines there are really no meaningful human stories about the pakistani soldier and the pakistani officer and i think it's a shame because if there is a war going on and sacrifices have been made whatever the political role of the military establishment may be that is a story worth telling about the mother from a village who lost a son in a war that is being fought on the western frontier and it was it was tough for me as background research to not have access to this information because through the human stories you can understand and learn the training these people went through right and what changed because only through that loss was the military force to change its training doctrine 
And I think not many people were able to understand that even when I was researching and I was in Pakistan, Karan explained to them what I was looking for. And they were like, oh, jung chal rahi hai. and I'm like, sirf jung nahi hai. Jung ke bhi hote hai. Wo badle gaye hai. Badalne ki hui hai. Aur hui hai. That is important to understand. Nahi, um, isme so rupayu wali tumne baat ki hai. Isme sabse bada jo uh, person to blame hai, uh, party to blame hai, wo khud fauj hai. Wo khud fauj hai. Kyun? क्योंकि ये नूर जहां के वो है वो वतन के जड़े भी जो भी वही जो वो साड़ी पहन के जो गा रही हैं वो वो पैंट की जंग से आगे नहीं निकले इनका 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 आईएसपीआर उधर इन वे दबा हुआ है फंसा हुआ है हां रिसेंटली हमें पता चला है कि आईएसपीआर सोशल मीडिया में भी इन्वॉल्वड है दैट्स अ होल अदर कन्वर्सेशन मे बी दैट्स अ होल अदर शो मगर ओवरऑल दे डोंट लेट द ऑफिसर्स राइट um, they don't let, especially, I understand how serving officers are not allowed to write even in this military. But when you're retired, Petraeus ne pata nahi, kuch chhe kitabhe lagni hai, paanch kitabhe lagni hai, har ek hafte das din baat to uska mein article padhto hon. General Petraeus ka. Thik hai. Kab, acha, ek wo, kabhi mein wo, uska, Magraven ka padhto hon, to kabhi mein, kiska, you know? Sab, sab readers ne koji char, paanch kitabhe lagni hai, NATO se retire hon. Thik hai, Mattis kitab lagh raha hai. Matla, acha, ab wo, वो आपको ये बता रहा है कि यार मेरे जो न्यूक्लियर मिसाइल हैं वो मैंने वो निवाडा की फलाने गार में छुपाए में नहीं यार वो ये नहीं बता रहा वो अपना वर्ल्ड व्यू दे रहा है कि हमने इराक में क्या गलतियां की और क्या छक्के मारे हमने अफगानिस्तान में क्या गलतियां की क्या छक्के मारे हमने यू नो वो दे रहे हैं कर रहे इन्होंने है तो पाकिस्तान का एक जनरल किताब लिख देता है किताब बैन हो जाती है पाकिस्तान का एक जनरल छोड़ो जो जनरल के भाई हैं वो किताब लिख देते हैं वो किताब बैन हो जाती है जनरल का भाई होना भी अजाब है शिजा नवाज साहब जो मेरे मेरे ख्याल है मेरे वालिद की तरह मेरे वालिद मरहूम अगर जिंदा होते मैं उन्हें उतनी इज्जत देता जितना मैं शिजा नवाज साहब को देता हूं मगर दिस इज नॉट अबाउट पर्सनल टाइज फुल डिस्क्लेमर दिस इज ऑल अबाउट स्कॉलरशिप उन्होंने किताब लिखी जनरल दुरानी ने अच्छा फ्रैंकली एमी किताब मोरो they do other things. Basically, the reporting is not a scholarship. Ka time nahi hota. Hai. So it should be encouraged that you can retire. But you can't do it. So now you can report it, now you can do it. So this is, this is their fault. And this is why you can do it in Washington. You can do it in Washington. You can do it in Washington. Think tanks में इनके कोई connection नहीं है। अमेरिका में पूरी दुनिया का ex फौजी आके think tank में बैठता है, बसता है, बात करता है, explain करता है, debate करता है, narrate करता है, uh, espouse करता है अपने मुल्क का narrative, explain करता है। इनका नहीं कोई फौजी करता। अमेरिका में um, um, recently freshly retired Indian admirals आए में हैं। ठीक है, तो quad army नहीं बन गया ना? अमीनी किसी ने किसी को ख्वाब नहीं आया था 2005 में ठीक है कि क्वाड बना दो मतलब देयर वाज अ देयर वाज अ होल अंडरस्टैंड इज अ देयर इज अ होल स्कॉलरशिप व्हिच गोस बिहाइंड द द द थिंक टैंकरी एंड द एकेडेमिया एंड द द मोस्ट डैमेजिंग थिंग अबाउट द आर्मी फ्रॉम द पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ नैरेटिव बिल्डिंग एंड स्टोरी टेलिंग हैज बीन इट्स ओन stubborn uh, uh, lack of dynamism and movement on um, moving beyond uh, uh, local Pakistani media. Ya to koi wo ek third class ki samka wo koi aaj aaj tumne tweet kiya tha, maine retweet kiya hai tumhe uzair ki Facebook ne kaha hai ki Facebook wala. Haan, zara explain karo kya hua hai. Facebook, I mean, that was pretty interesting the way they did it this time. So, they did the same thing. Basically, took down a bunch of pages and accounts, which they call coordinated inauthentic behavior, which basically you're running a troll farm, Hmm. targeting domestic audiences in English, Pashto, and some other language, Arabic or something. And Facebook found out about it. They took it down. They named the company that was involved, but they didn't say what group they were involved with. They said it's linked to the same group they found in 2019 or whatever. You click on that link and you read the story and it turns out that that group was linked to the ISPR. 
and it's like so, why is the ispr busy in domestic audience information operations is beyond me theek hai now i'll go to bat for the ispr sir i will say that if i am general x and i have all this all this this huge organization i will say i'm being a little naughty and i'm going to invest in uh, these uh, these troll farms because you know what guess what i'm not the only one right the israelis are running their troll farms right and the americans are running their the russians and have invented the troll farm right and uh, the indians aren't exactly like uh, like uh, you know doing yoga right now either so all the disinformation assume, labs se pakde ja rahe right so i'll just assume ke because everybody else is doing a, is running a troll farm then mag one se khet ki mulliyon ke i don't run a troll farm so i go to my general general why i say sir wo i'm going to run a troll farm he goes why i say sir because we indians kar rahe hain israelis kar rahe hain americans kar rahe hain sab kar rahe hain yahudi kar rahe hain main main bhi kar raha hu to mujhe general x mujhe general bhai ijazat de deta hai kar lo yaar kar lo troll farm magar you know what what's exciting is what's exciting what would be exciting is ke ye ye main is for broadway or 71st pe hu 50 block is taraf na sahi hai khali 50 block shamal pe ek university lagti hai uska naam shayad suno uska naam hai columbia university ठीक है और उसमें एक चेयर है उसका नाम है कायद आजम चेयर ठीक है और कायद आजम चेयर का जो काम है ना वो पिछले बीस पच्चीस साल से कायद आजम चेयर का काम है कि वो कायद आजम चेयर कोलंबिया यूनिवर्सिटी ने बनाई है कि उधर एक पाकिस्तानी प्रोफेसर आएगा या आएगी मगर उसकी एक एक वो एक उनकी एक शर्त है कोलंबिया यूनिवर्सिटी कोलंबिया यूनिवर्सिटी बाय द वे छह या सात कितनी आईवी लीग है नौ उनमें से उन आईवी लीग में से एक आईवी लीग है और इस शहर की वाहिद आई लीग और ये दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा या कह लें आप इंपॉर्टेंट शहर है फाइनेंशियली एंड पॉलिटिकली इन वे वेल इन वे ठीक है मगर वो एक शर्त है उनकी वो कहते हैं यार आधे पैसे तुम दो कायदे आजम चेयर के और आधे पैसे हम देते हैं मगर एक काम करना है और कि एक बंदा जरूर चूज करो चक्कर यह है कि दस साल से मेरा ख्याल है लास्ट कायदे आजम चेयर खाली बात है ठीक है अच्छा पैसे कितने हैं खाली तो पड़ी है ना ये तो किस सबको पता है उजैर उजैर यूनस दस साल से खाली पड़ी है पैसे कितने हैं पच्चीस हजार डॉलर मतलब के चालीस लाख रुपए चालीस लाख रुपए नहीं देती पाक फौज या हुकूमत पाकिस्तान या मोफा मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फॉरेन अफेयर्स या जेडी भी वजारत है मैं दे देता हूँ चालीस हजार मुझसे आज चालीस लाख ले लो यार किसी ऑन्टरप्रनर से ले लें किसी कि मैं चालीस लाख देता हूँ मैं देता हूँ एज ए पाकिस्तानी आप चालीस लाख नहीं दें बाकी चालीस लाख ये आ, ये दे देंगे मगर बंदा तो चूज करें उजैर यूनस को चूज करें किसी को प्रोफेसर चूज किसी को चूज करें मुझे नहीं करें मुझे प्लीज नहीं करें बंद हो जाए नहीं कह रहे there's one pakistani professor left at columbia right uh but the pakistan chair is a tenured or put, it's not tenured position but it's put, it's a it's a fixed income position man you can send in anybody they will accept him or her and wo banda batao kya karega wo pakistan ke bare mein padhayega uska aur koi kaam nahi hai wo is mulk ke hone wale leaders ko which is one of the six or seven ivies unhe padhayega ki pakistan क्या है और क्या नहीं है आप ये भी नहीं करते आप क्या करते हैं आप ट्रोल फार्म्स करते हैं यार आई कैन बेट यू जैर आई कैन बेट यू कि वो जो मेरे जो 40 लाख हैं वो इनके इन्होंने मेरा हाल 40 करोड़ लगाए होंगे उन ट्रोल फार्म ट्रोल फार्म के ऊपर या ये जो अल्फा प्रो जो कंपनी का जो फेसबुक ने नाम लिया है मुझे ले लो यार मुझे ले लो मगर प्लीज अच्छा बाय द वे कायद आजम चेयर कोलंबिया यूनिवर्सिटी में खाली है बर्कली में पाकिस्तान चेयर खाली है कैम्ब्रिज में पाकिस्तान चेयर खाली है हाइडलबर्ग में जिधर अलामा इकबाल पढ़े हैं ये जो आप अलामा इकबालियत करते हैं ना ये जो शहीन और ये सब जो बकवास आप कर रहे होते हैं ठीक है आप कुछ नहीं करें यार आप जरा बातें काम करें आप जो शहीन वाला जो स्कॉलरशिप है आप वो किसी बच्चे को भिजवा दें आप एक पाकिस्तानी प्रोफेसर को जब यूरोप की लीडिंग इकोनॉमी जर्मनी की लीडिंग यूनिवर्सिटी हाइडलबर्ग में भिजवाएंगे जब लामा पढ़े में है तो आप खुद फर्क देखेंगे और ये फर्क आप मीजली दो तीन साल के अंदर देखेंगे तो इन्हें अपनी स्टोरी नहीं बेचनी आती इन्हें बात नहीं करनी आती इन्हें खाली ये कर, ताने देने आते हैं उस दिन मुझे फोन आ गया आपने स्टोरी की आपकी स्टोरी नहीं अच्छी 
Nobody's yeah. ever happy. That, I'm not in the making happy business people happy business, nor are you, is it? But we are in the business of communicating, and thus we must communicate that you should learn how to communicate. We might yeah, be wrong, but you're totally wrong, bro. You're totally yeah. wrong. <laughs> I, I agree. And I think like being caught with troll funds or Facebook is, is another level. Like Sudan and Pakistan are in the latest report. So that's all that needs to be said on that because others have been caught. The Iranians have been caught. The Russians have been caught. But they all get more sophisticated over time. You don't want to get caught multiple times by the same organization. I'm not going to hold it against you, right? Iran is doing it, Rus is doing it, Sudan is doing it. Sudan is like a small country that is doing it. Then you will also be doing it. Do it, man. Do it, man. Do it. Counterintelligence is a part of it. You have not worn 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 it. Thank you. Sorry for the uh, 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 hopefully not sexist analogies. Right? But it's okay. I understand yeah, where you're coming from. You have a job. But you don't have this job that you have to do. जो आप जो आपने बिल्कुल अपना नैरेटिव आउटसोर्स किया हुआ है तू वन पर्टिकुलर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऐसा नहीं होता यू नीड टू गेट अप यू नीड टू इंपावर फवाद चौधरी इज अ गुड गाय आई एम डिसअपॉइंटेड इन व्हाट ही सेड रिसेंटली अबाउट जर्नलिस्ट बट स्टिल स्मार्ट गाय यू नीड टू इंपावर योर एजुकेशन मिनिस्ट्रीज यू नीड टू इंपावर प्लीज यू नीड टू इंपावर योर जर्नलिस्ट अगेन and you really need to you 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 might be a chinese ally uh, but you really need to step away uh, from the way the people's republic of china treats its journalists because you know what you were founded by a lawyer constitutionalism is in your guts it's in your dna you're not a revolutionary state you were founded by someone who argued his way into creating a country he wrote